Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video I'm going to start looking at resistor capacitor circuits, and I'm interested in the response of these types of circuits with respect to frequency, and that leads us into looking at what we call filters, and specifically the low-pass filter. Alright, so let's take a look at the RC circuit. Alright, so we have this circuit right here, and what we're doing is we have a resistor and a capacitor. Remember, you don't usually you don't use capacitors by themselves. They're always with something else. And the behavior of a capacitor that we've looked at is that when I drive it with an AC signal, if the AC signal is very low in frequency, then the capacitor looks like an open circuit. Okay, so to DC, the, the capacitor looks like an open. And if I drive it with a really, really fast frequency, then the capacitor looks like a short circuit. And that's due to the governing equation of a capacitor, which means that the current is, is proportional to the rate of change of voltage across it. So if the rate of change of voltage across it is very low, like zero, then there's no current and it's an open. But if it's really, really high, then it's like super, super, you know, it's basically infinite. And that means that the current through the capacitor could go as high as you wanted. And that's the characteristics of a wire. Okay, so that's called a short circuit. So if I plot this out, uh, what I have is I'm going to plot this versus frequency. And frequency is, you know, it's nothing more than hertz. And what I did is if I put in let's say that I put in some really slow sine wave right here that had an amplitude of what we'll call Vs, like in this circuit. Uh, it, graphically what happens is that this is like some slow circuit and then I get faster and faster and then I get faster and faster and faster and faster, 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 faster. And what happens is that I'm trying to keep the same amplitude across all these different uh, sine waves that I drive through this RC circuit. But what I care about is what is the attenuation or how much does the output signal shrink and so if we think about it when we start off and we're at zero uh, what I want to do is that if I wanted to plot the magnitude of VC okay so this voltage right here I would end up having VC right there and that's because this circuit looks like an open so you basically have uh, some some source and since it's at DC you basically have an open circuit and so there's no current that flows so all the voltage right here VC is equal to VS and that's what you have. Over here though, when you get really, really high, you're gonna have a circuit that looks like this. You're gonna have frequent, uh, some really high frequency, and then you're gonna have a short circuit, and when you try to say what is VC over here, it's gonna be equal to zero, because you can't develop a, a voltage across the wire. And so what happens is that as you go out over time, this goes down and down and down. This is what's called a filter. Okay, so a filter is a circuit that allows some frequencies to pass through and it stops other frequencies. Okay, so in this situation, the, the frequencies that live in the in this range of frequencies, these would be called the past filter, the past frequencies, or what we can say is the pass band. Okay, so they pass. We didn't mess with them, even though we attended when it was a little. But over here, any frequencies out here, this is called the stop band okay and so this particular type of circuit is actually called a low pass filter okay very simple it's always the first filter that you look at and we'll call it LPF and that right there is the simplest form of a filter that's built with simply a resistor and a capacitor okay and it just has to do with the behavior of of a capacitor. Okay, so life is good. There are other types of, of filters though that exist that we're not going to look at uh, when because we're studying capacitors right now. But there are absolutely other types of filters. So if I came along and I had some frequency response where I plotted what actually came out of the circuit, so this would be like V out. I could have a profile that kind of looked like this, where I had oh it's nothing's passing, and then all of a sudden stuff starts passing. That would be. This means you would pass over here at the high frequency and you would stop down here at the low frequency. This type of response right here is what we call a high pass filter. Okay, so high pass filter because it passes high frequencies. There's also, you can actually build other filters that are even <laughs> more particular. So you could have something where if you plotted uh, something where it didn't have anything, didn't let anybody go through, then all of a sudden it let a range of frequencies go through and it did something like that. So this now would be the uh, pass band right here and then it would stop the frequencies over here and stop the frequency over there. This is actually called a band pass 
filter. And a classic example of this is like your radio, okay? So if you go on the radio, when this might be set to 100.7 megahertz, okay? So like an FM radio station in Bozeman. And what happens is that you'll only, you tune into this frequency and then you listen to the music and every other channel on the radio is blocked out. And then as you turn the dial, this pass band actually moves around and then you're like, okay, now I'm gonna dial it into 96, seven megahertz and listen to different types of music, okay? So that's a band pass filter. <clears throat> and then finally, of course, you can think about, you can have what's called a notch filter, <laughs> which looks like this. This is frequency. This is always frequency, okay? Don't let me write time there. So this is frequency. My T's and F's like the same, don't they? Frequency, okay. And so over here, you could have something where it's like you pass something, then you block something like that. And so this would be pass, and this would be pass and this would be stop. And so this would just be simply a notch filter. And there's all there's even more advanced filters like comb filters and stuff like that. But these are just the basic types of filters. And we start having we start getting to think about filters when we start looking at our first component in electrical engineering or electric circuits that has a frequency dependent behavior and that is absolutely the capacitor. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Let's go ahead and let's take some measurements on this thing and just see what it might look like. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a circuit. Okay, and I'm going to come over here. I want to build that circuit right there. And what I want to do is I want to plug in some values, <clears throat> some common values and what I'll do for the resistor is I'll do 1k ohm and then for the capacitor I'll do 0.1 microfarads and I'm going to build that circuit right now. So there's my values that I have and here's what I got. This is a capacitor that is 0.1 microfarad, okay? And then I have my 1k resistor right here. And what I'm going to do is build this little RC circuit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use these pin headers to bring in my sine wave source, which I'm going to use the analog discovery 2 for. And I'm going to drive in the sine wave, but I also want to measure the response of the circuit using the oscilloscope function. So I'm going to use these pin headers so that I can actually kind of access a whole bunch of stuff as I build this circuit. So first thing I'm going to do is pop in my 1k, in across this strip in two terminal strips. Now I'll go ahead and bring my uh, capacitor down like this so it kind of looks like the circuit. <laughs> and then what I'll do is I'll pick up my ground right here. Okay, and then I want to measure a couple things. I want to measure the output voltage right there, and then I want to measure the input voltage. I want to drive in there, and then of course I want to get my ground right there. So all I got to do is I'm going to take the two channels. Actually, let's do the input source first. So here is W1. That's what I'm going to use to drive in the sine wave. And then I also absolutely have to get my ground. So I got my ground right here. And I also have my ground connected all the way through the uh, breadboard. And then here comes my oscilloscope channel. So here's channel one, and then here's channel two. And I don't need the negative channels because I already have my ground and we're gonna be going pretty dang slow. So there's my circuit right there. And so now I'm ready to actually take some measurements on this. And remember, what I wanna do is I'm trying to drive in uh, sine wave values and then I wanna look at the response coming out of this. So let's go ahead and bring up uh, waveforms. So now here comes my waveform screen and I'll go ahead and make it big <clears throat> since there's no LEDs on here you it's not gonna be able to see anything other it's not like anything's blinking so let's go ahead and bring up wave gen first and lo and behold it gives me a sine wave by default and let's go ahead and make it uh, 500 Hertz okay so we, that's what we're gonna drive into this little buddy first and it's 500 Hertz let's leave the amplitude at one and that means it'll go up to one volts down to negative one volts and life is good okay so there it is let's go ahead and hit run on that and then I'm gonna go back to welcome and let's go over the scope and I got my scope here let's just go ahead and run see what we see oh there we go <laughs> okay so I got myself a scope right there life is good and you can see that coming in you have uh, a sine wave and coming out you have a sine wave and I can prove my to myself what's going on is if I take the orange and disconnect it then the thing stops and it's triggering off the orange so you can tell that that's that's real okay so life is good so there you're back the trigger just happens to be reset at zero and life is good 
Okay, so I want to define some measurements on here that are done automatically for me. So we haven't done this before, but if you come up here into Analog Discovery in the Waveforms tool and hit measurements, it brings up this measurement uh, field and it'll actually, you can add a whole bunch of measurements that are done automatically. So let's go right click and say uh, defined measurement. And let's go ahead and add in the, uh, I want a vertical measurement, which basically is voltage. And I want to get the amplitude of what comes in. So that's VS in our circuit. And then let's go to channel two and let's go ahead and grab its amplitude and then let's Let's grab uh, channel two's, we want a horizontal measurement, which would be the time domain. Let's grab frequency. Okay, so you can see right here, if I stop this, the amplitude coming in is 0.999 and coming out on channel two is 0.999. And that makes sense. That's kind of what we just drew out on our little low pass filter. So at a lower frequency, it's not really attenuating anything. So I go ahead and say run. And so now I'm gonna start increasing the frequency. So if I wanted to jot that down, I could make, you know, if I was being really sophisticated, I could actually come along and make a little table and say, okay, so here, here's my, I wanna make a little table. And what I wanna do is I wanna put the input frequency right here and it's gonna be in Hertz. And what I wanna do is I wanna basically measure what VS is and what VC is, and you can call this the input, and this is the output. Okay, so I'm gonna be really, really formal here. So this is gonna be 500 hertz, and VS coming in is 0 0.999, coming out, which is VC, is 0 0.99, I don't know, it looks like eight to me, okay? So there's our, there's our table right there. Okay, so now we go back to this, and now what I wanna do is let's pump it up, let's do like a 1K on here. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go uh, wave gen and, I, and everything's still running so I don't even have to mess around with it. Let's go ahead and just drop it to 1K. So I go 1K, it gets faster. Come back to the scope and run that thing. And it's it's about the same. So I go ahead and hit stop here so I can see my values. So I got like 0 0.998 and 0.994, so almost the exact same thing. So now let's do another measurement. Let's, let's go to like 2K right here. So I go ahead and run that, go back to wave gen, and I'm just kind of slowly stepping this thing up. So I go, okay, uh, now I've got that. Now I'm gonna come over here. I need to zoom in now since it's getting a little bit faster. And you know, nothing, nothing really is happening so far. So I got 999 and like 98. Okay, so nothing really major. Let's go now to, uh, let's do like 5K and then we'll start really cranking it up. So I got 5K, hit return on that, go back to my scope and it's like, oh, it's getting faster. Is it actually starting to get smaller? It's like, okay, well, it's like 0.99. 9.8, I guess, and we got 0.94. All right, and I'm also starting to see it shift a little bit. That's kind of interesting. Well, let's really, let's hump this up a little bit. Let's go up to 10. Let's go to 10 kilohertz, okay? So now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go 10 kilohertz. I'm like, all right, here we go. Let's get flying. <laughs> so we go up to 10, and now I'm gonna go back to scope, and I'm like, Oh, look at this. It's getting a little smaller. I keep having to zoom in, but now I'm, it's finally starting to get noticeable. So I got like nine, eight. The input source is not moving like at all. And I wouldn't expect it to because I'm probing directly at the output. But look at this. It's starting to, to come to starting to get smaller on the V out. And so I'm like, all right, you want to get crazy. Let's double that again. Let's go to 20 kilohertz. It's like 20. All right, well, here we go. So I come over here and I go, boom. 20, I come back to my scope. Oh, Nelly, look at this. I still got 0.98 on the input there, but now I'm rocking a 0.61. So this thing is like beyond 70% down at this point. So now you're really getting something significant. What do we wanna do now? Let's go to 50. Let's go to 50 kilohertz. So now that we're just gonna kill this thing. So now it's like 50. Oh, oh, look at this, look at this. Scope it. Oh my goodness, this is a little, we got a little nub. That's all we got left, a little nub. Look at it, it's at 300, so I'm still at 0.99 on the source. I'm at 0.3, I mean, it's already, it switched over to million on me, so I'm at 30% of what's going in there. Now let's just, let's just hammer this, buddy. Let's go to 100 kilohertz, so 100 kilohertz, and we'll go back to wave gen, and we'll go 100 kilohertz and I come back to my scope oh my goodness look at that so this thing it's it's shorting out the capacitor right so it's nine nine and I got like one five point one five volts so inner so that is what a low pass filter looks like when you sweep the frequency and so that's exactly what we had drawn earlier right I mean that's that is 
That is this right here. That was the behavior that we expected to see on the capacitor. And lo and behold, we did. We had to put in every one of these sine waves, but it's like, yeah, so what? Okay, let's look at one last thing before we end this up. Uh, in the time domain, it's really fascinating to me uh, because what does it look like when something roll, has a low pass filter response when you were looking at like a step, like a, maybe you would see in like a computer. So I'm gonna come back to wave gen and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to a square wave. And so now we're just gonna hit this really fast kind of transition and see what happens on the capacitor. We kind of know studying the capacitor that it sh the voltage can't change instantaneously. So let me, let me put this down to like two kilohertz and I'm gonna come back now to the scope and I'm gonna see what I have. So I come back here and I go, and run it and look at this I'm gonna zoom back out look at this this characteristic right here is exactly how a capacitor responds when you hit it with a step voltage it cannot change its voltage instantaneously so it's it's basically at the lowest voltage and the input source tries to go all the way up amplitude of one, the capacitor cannot change instantaneously, so it ramps up, and that's that characteristic exponential ramp that you see. And then when you come over here and it drops, that's that characteristic exponential decay that you see when you have uh, an RC circuit. Okay, so that is it. We have now looked at an R the behavior of a capacitor when we swept the input sine wave frequency, and we saw that it's a low pass filter when you have a resistor capacitor circuit. And then we looked at what that would look like if you hit it with a step, and it's got that exponential ramp. So we are understanding capacitors. All right, that is it, and nice work. See ya.